We are so glad that you decided to come to church today. We're so glad that God is near and in our midst and within us and upon us and doing great things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we are we're talking about Christmas. Um, I'm going to be sharing a, a few quotes from uh, Tim Keller is a pastor. He pastored in uh, New York City. He retired a, a little bit ago. He's written a number of books that I've gotten. I've quoted him before. Uh, he passed away this last year from cancer, um, but he's just had a... We, we differ on some of our theology of the Holy Spirit, but uh, he's just got such richness on... He writes about the human condition a lot and the, the grace of God and, and our encounter with and need for a Savior. And so... Uh, he's very smart and uh, is now in a different location. He's in heaven, and uh, we have his writings left here. But uh, he has this, uh, what, when you think of, uh, how do I want to say this? When you think about Christmas, everyone, uh, do you guys know what Christmas is? Okay, okay. okay. When you think about Christmas, like, what comes to mind? What comes to mind for Christmas? What's been your experience of Christmas? Is it a, is it a positive thing? Like, uh, do you have good memories about that? Do you have traditions? Is there lots of things that fill your head? Do you uh, get excited about presents? Like, uh, we could, I, I wanted to be careful to not let this turn into a 20-minute discussion session on what you like about Christmas, because everyone gets pretty excited about Christmas. But... Uh, one of the deals with Christmas is uh, it is like one of the premier Christian holidays because we celebrate the birth of Jesus. That's what Christmas is. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus. But Christmas, I don't know if you know this or not, but especially kids get pretty excited about Christmas. Someone just told me just a little bit ago, we're excited that we're going to be on Christmas break pretty soon, right? So Christmas is an exciting time. So here's the deal. It's possible, it's possible to have a full-blown, warm, wonderful, uh, fulfilling, exciting, memory-making, secular Christmas experience. And I'm not even saying that that's bad entirely. Like, we can have our traditions. How many eat sugar plums and figgy pudding? Not that many of you. Okay, well, maybe that's an older crowd. You guys are all young. So, <laughs> you know, what? Whatever, whether that's uh, fruitcake and uh, Christmas carols. But you can sing songs. We can sing, have a holly jolly, right? We can talk about old St. Nicholas. We can talk about the rain of the flying deer, right? Get your guns. You're going to shoot the flying reindeer, we can talk about Santa's sleigh. We can talk about being kind. We can talk about little drummer boys. Like we can sing a whole array of songs. We can have an entire experience. We can uh, have traditions that are welcoming and warm and even meaningful. And we can exchange gifts. Do you guys exchange gifts at Christmas time? You can do that. Got some nods at least. Okay, I, I would assume everyone does, but I don't. Maybe not. And you can give gifts, and you can feel love, and you can have gatherings at your home, and you can have good food, and entirely miss the meaning of Christmas. Isn't that interesting? So this, uh, whether this is a message or a series, it's called Hidden Christmas. Hidden Christmas. Because right in the middle of, of this beautiful, rich, and fulfilling secular holiday, in the center of that is Jesus, who often gets missed when that's the real meaning of Christmas. So we're just going to poke at that today a little bit. We're going to read one of, the, one of the prophetic verses in Isaiah that was prophesied about Jesus long before Jesus was ever born. And Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. So it's in Isaiah chapter 9. Verses 2 and then 5 through 7. And, and these will be familiar to you guys. You've heard these before. If you've ever been in church at a Christmas time, you've heard these verses before. And it says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Every warrior's 
boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. So that's a prophetic message given in Isaiah long, I mean, hundreds of years before Jesus came. And Jesus fulfilled this prophetic word. And so I want to just focus in just a second on this part of it, just that first part of it. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. So our hidden Christmas today, we're talking about light and darkness. Talking about light and darkness. The Bible, when it uses the word darkness, it refers to uh, really two different things. So it can be talking about evil, and it can be talking about ignorance. So when we're talking about people living in darkness, has anyone kind of ever felt darkness before? Just kind of felt like it's hard to put that in words. I tell you, we've been uh, traveled around the the United States some, and we've been in, in different places, and just even different places around here. There's places that you go ahead and you're like, okay, this is dark. And we're not talking about that there's not lights on. We're just talking about there's a spiritual oppression. There's just a heaviness. There's a, there's a darkness. There's, there's an evil. So, so the evil part of it, I don't know if you guys just only go to church and go home, if you do anything else besides that. Does anyone, I mean, do you work? Do you ever go to the grocery store? you ever listen to the news? It, it's a dark world out there, okay? And the Bible tells us that. The Bible's not surprised by this. God was not like, oh my, look at what they're doing. It, like, it's a dark world. It is full of evil, right? Anywhere that you go, you find people that are in the human condition. You find people that are full of jealousy, bitterness, unforgiveness. We find hatred and racism. We find ugliness and evil. We find entitlement. We find, we find arrogance and pride. We find greed. We find corruption. We find wars and killings and murders and abortion. And, and just there's just the list goes on and on and on and on of the evil that is so prevalent. Has anyone ever ex- experienced evil before? Yeah, it's a dark world. And it's, it's a land that is filled with darkness. And I think in this current mood of, of the United States right now, we're, we're experiencing a lot, of, a lot more outward darkness. But darkness can also refer to ignorance. Like, I'm, I'm dark of understanding. I just I don't know about. So sometimes we're, we're in darkness just because we're ignorant. We didn't, that doesn't mean we're dumb. It just means we're uninformed. We just don't. That's what ignorant means. It means I just don't know. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, just a pretty passionate conversation about spiritual growth and, and uh, just kind of giving them some tools and kind of helping walk through some different things. And I said, it's really interesting. I said, I, you know, I try as often as I can. I, you know, I, I actually, we're in my office. I pulled up my computer and I said, here's my list of, of teachers and, and preachers that I listen to. I pulled up another book tab and it was a big, long list. Here's the podcast that I listen to. And why? I said, because I always want to be growing. I said, people are encountering things of the flesh, the devil and the world and, and hurdles faster than I can grow to deal with them. I said, I, I want to be just growing all the time. And I said, I feel inadequate most times. And I'm like, I just want to be growing. I want to rep- represent Jesus to the world as, as best as I can. I want to walk in the grace of God. I want to be filled with the spirit of life and joy. And so I'm, I'm always trying to grow spiritually and I'm always trying to grow, you know, in the knowledge of God. And, and uh, I said, it's, it's really funny that once you finally know it all, that's when you can actually finally start learning. It's when you get past that. When you, you know, because when you're young, you're like, yeah, I know that, I know that. Those guys just need, I'll tell, let me tell them something, right? And then you kind of get to a place where you, where you figure out that you don't have it all figured out. But you have to get past the place where you know it all first. Because you don't know what you don't know. And that's what I was telling this guy. I'm like, I'm like, I'm terrified right now because I've found out in the last 10 years, there's more that I didn't know that I didn't know even than I knew. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Because when you're younger, you're like, hoop, hoop, hoop. you just, you don't know that you don't know these things. Like, like you find out that there's information you should have and you're like, wait a minute, I should know that? And they're like, uh-huh. Like, I don't know that. Well, then you better learn. Oh, okay. But when you don't know that you don't know, that's called ignorance. And the extent of our ignorance is incredible. <laughs> I just want to use myself as an, as an example. Like our ignorance is, is grander and greater than, than we realize. Fortunately, we have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's a good place to say amen. We have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So darkness can mean this ignorance. I just don't know. I don't know about God. I don't know what is required of me. I don't know what God, who God is and what, what he demands of my life. And or I'm full of evil. So upon this dark land, a light has dawned. So, all right. So what do we do with that? What do we do with all this darkness? What do we do with, uh, all right, I agree, you agree, there's darkness. So we agree? Yes. Make six of you. Okay. I agree and you agree that there's a lot of darkness. Agree? Yes. Okay. That, that felt a little more hearty. All right. So I wrote this this morning. All right. Okay. So sure, things are dark, but if we're going to fix this world, we just need to do better, right? We got to try harder, be nicer, don't be greedy. We've got to love others, be tolerant of others, and accept everyone, learn more, read more, get smarter, and let technology lead us into a bright and better future, right? <laughs> I hear this sometimes from myself, and I hear this sometimes from you guys, and I hear this all the time from the world. And I want to say that that is not the right answer. That's not the right answer. As a result of the right answer, our world should get better wherever we have influence on it. As a result of our, the answer that we're going to talk about, walking in the light, as a result of that, we should be less greedy. We should love others more. We should learn how to embrace people and walk with them through life. You know what I mean? We should be growing. I just talked about learning more, for crying out loud. Like We, we should do that. But so often... So often, we think that that's the answer. People just need to remember, especially if you're, if you're older than 20, and I'm not mean to be stepping on toes here. I'm older than 20, so I know how this, I know how this feels. Well, if we could go back to think how things were back in my day, it would be a lot better. And I just want to tell you, that's humanism. Don't get sucked into that. I agree with that. I agree it would be better if people had more respect for teachers and the law. And what, and it just, I, I get it. But that's not the answer, because, because we're living in a land of darkness. So what do we do with darkness? What do we do with darkness? That's the question. What do we do with darkness? We can't counsel darkness. We can't encourage darkness to be a little less dark, right? We can't get angry at darkness. Well, I mean, we can, but it, as far as solutions go, if you walk into a dark room tonight, you know, because it's, it's wintertime. It gets dark like at 2 o'clock now, right? <laughs> Which I personally like. I know I'm in the min minority here. Uh, but you walk into this dark room, and you're like, hey, stop it. <laughs> See how that works for you. Or, you're, or you walk in, and you're like, okay, darkness, here's, here's the deal. I would just like to come to an agreement that I'll be less bubbly and bright if you just be less dark, Okay. I gotta, however you want to counsel it, talk to it, darkness is just darkness. And so, so often in our humanistic approach, because that's what we hear from the world, and so remember, you're always being discipled. Remember, church, you're always being discipled. You're either being discipled by the Word of God and by fellow believers that are walking in the Word of God, or you're being discipled by everything else that you hear. And you're pretty good at, at chopping off about 80% of it, but it's that other 20% that I'm worried about, right? It leaks in and it gets stuck in there. So we got to be nicer, try harder, make this a better world. I'm, I'm for that, but that's not the answer to darkness. That is not the, that's the answer to a better society to a point. But you can only go so far with that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just suggest that we don't have the power right now in America to even go that far. Like it's, we need something else to infuse life into us. So that that kind of stuff happens. 
So we read in Isaiah chapter 9, we read verse 2 and then 5 through 7, I think it was. But just prior to that, in chapter 8, we're going to look at a couple verses in Isaiah chapter 8. And so it says this. Isaiah 8, verses 19 and 20. This is right before chapter 9. It says, when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this world, they have no light of dawn. This is just before chapter 9. One more verse. 8 verses 21 through 22. Sorry, two more verses. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged. And looking upward, they will curse their king and their God. They, then they will, what? Look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into our outer darkness. And so here's the problem with us just getting a little bit better. We cannot. We can't. We're immersed in darkness. We're filled with darkness. We live in a land of darkness. And we want to look to us and say, if you would just try a little harder and be a little nicer, this world would be better. And there are truths to that. Your experience of this world will be better. But that's not the answer to fix the darkness. That is a really, really temporary fix. And I'm going to say it's not even that good of a fix. Because as long as we're all agreeing that everyone else is the problem, right? What do I do about me? And so that's the problem. We've got a whole world full of me's out there. And uh, there's darkness that needs to be dealt with in here. And there's darkness that needs to be dealt with out there. So what's the answer? So Tim Keller, we're going to have a few of his quotes. And so he's kind of talking about these verses. He says this in his book, Hidden Christmas. wonder where I got the title from says uh, they are looking, Tim says, they're looking towards the earth and to human resources to fix the world. They're looking to their experts, to the mystics, to the scholars for solutions. Yes, they say, we are in darkness, but we can overcome it ourselves. People make the same claim today. Some look more to the state, some to the market, and everyone looks to technology, yet they share the identical assumption. Things are dark, but we believe that we can end that darkness with intellect and innovation. And people really believe that. And we in the church sometimes get sucked into that as well. Because we like our happy Christmas. But there's such a deeper meaning. And we're going to get to it. Tim Keller goes on to say, years ago, an ad in the New York Times says, the meaning of Christmas is that love will triumph and we'll be able to put together a world of unity and peace. That sounds really good, doesn't it? In other words, it's saying we have the light within us, and so we are the ones that can dispel the darkness of the world. Tim says it's saying that we can overcome poverty and injustice and violence and evil. If we work together, we can create a world of unity and peace. How's that going in 2023? I mean, that sentiment has been around for a long time, and people really have tried. The answer to the darkness is not trying harder. The answer to the darkness is not getting angrier. The answer to the darkness is not more protests. The answer to the darkness is not a more intensified approach to dealing with darkness. Tim says, the message of Christianity is instead, quote, things really are this bad and we can't heal or save ourselves. Things really are this dark. Nevertheless, there is hope. The Christmas message is that on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. He says, notice that it doesn't say that from the world a light has sprung, but upon the world. Say upon. Uh-huh. Upon the world, a light has dawned. It has come from outside. There's a light outside of this world. And Jesus has brought that light to save us. Indeed, he is the light. And he challenges us with this paragraph here. There's never been a gift offered that makes you swallow your pride to the depths that the gift of Jesus Christ requires us to do. Christmas means that we are so lost, so unable to save ourselves, that nothing less than the death of the Son of God himself could save us. That means that you are not somebody who can pull yourself together and live a moral and good life. That challenges us. Especially as Americans. That really challenges, I can do this and don't you tell me what I can't do, right? That challenge, the real message of Christmas is that holy macaroni, Batman, there's a lot of darkness. 
And you're not going to fix darkness. You're not going to caress darkness. You're not going to counsel darkness. You're not going to come up alongside darkness. You're not going to ease darkness. It has to be destroyed and dealt with. Because you can work on you a little bit, but to the degree of whatever power you have within you, that lasts a very short amount of time. How many have nailed every New Year's resolution you've ever made? Come on, let's see those hands. How many have never made one? <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot of good ideas, but it just doesn't work. And so we get, because these things sound so good, we just got to do better. We just got to try harder. We just got to love. You just got to love. You just got to love, man. It sounds so good, but it's missing the key component to fight darkness. You need the light. So Tim goes on to talk about uh, this president of the Czech Republic as a real world example. And he says this, one of the most thoughtful leaders, world leaders of the late 20th century was Václav Havel. Is that right? Any Czech Republic? people in here. He, had a un he was the first president of the Czech Republic. He had a unique vantage point from which to peer, peer deeply into both socialism and capitalism. And he was not optimistic that either would, by itself, solve the greatest human problems. Okay? Right? Went from a socialist to a capitalistic society, and he's like, I, he's, like he's experienced both of them. Here's what he said. He knew that science, unguided by moral principles, had given us the Holocaust. And he concluded that neither technology nor the state nor the market alone could save us from nuclear conflict, could save us from ethnic violence, or from environmental degradation. Quote, pursuit of the good life will not help humanity save itself, nor is democracy alone enough, Havel said. But a turning to and a seeking of God is needed. The human race constantly forgets, he added, that he is not God. That's what this up-and-coming president of the Czech Republic said, having saying, well, this will solve our problems, right? And uh, you, your government leaders, man, and, and I, I love a healthy government. You know, there is a lot of corruption and whatever and whatever, but, but government does help. Like, there are officials that we elect. that they, There is some good that they do. But they like to tell you all the good they can do and how if you vote for them, it's going to solve all of your problems. It's going to make the world a brighter place, packed with unicorns, rainbows, and roses. And should you only sign up to my ticket, life will be much better. Often, that promise is not met. We have few unicorns, few rainbows, and only thorny roses. Okay? But they're going to promise that. And so that, that's what Havel was saying here. He's like... It might sound great to have a different system of government or a different governor or a different president or a different uh, philosophy of governing, but that by itself, that might be a great tool, but that by itself is not going to defeat darkness. I love this verse from Acts 17. It says, so that they, this is Paul was giving this big uh, dissertation before, I think Felix, I think it was. He's saying, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him, uh, a couple different versions say, grope around in the darkness, that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. So even in Acts, Paul was hinting at, man, we're, we're walking through darkness. We're groping around. And that's often what, what people are doing that haven't met Jesus yet. They're, they're groping. They're trying. They're trying to fill their lives with something. They're reaching around in their darkness, in this land of darkness. They're trying to find an answer. We're trying to find something that satisfies. We're trying to find something that fills our lives. We're trying to find an answer. And we find something that feels a little bit like a flashlight. And we're like, all right, I think this is it. And it's just this temporary battery-powered, weak, ineffective thing that might look good for a second, and it doesn't. All right, let's do a couple more Tim Kellers. He says, in short, Jesus is the divine light of the world because he brings a new life to replace our spiritual deadness, because he shows us the truth that heals our spiritual blindness, because he's the beauty that breaks our addictions to money, sex, and power. As wonderful counselor, he walks with us even into and through the shadow of death where no other companion can go. He's a light for us when all other lights go out. The answer to the darkness 
It's not intensity. It's not, it's not uh, trying harder. It's not angry at the darkness. It's, it's, it's light. The answer to the darkness is light. The answer to the darkness is light. Are you with me? Because the answer to the darkness is light. A couple more of you are with me. <laughs> Staying here until you get it. <laughs> the answer to the darkness is light. Jesus said this in the book of John. He said, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Jesus is the light of the world. We minimize that. We're like, oh, that's cute. And we put a candle on the tree and we like, he's the light of the world. We see he is the, kids are going to be singing that. He is the light, 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 light of the world. And he shines, shines, shines. And that's great. It's a part of our Christmas tradition. But that's kind of like all the farther it goes sometimes. Jesus is the light, and the light is the answer that breaks the darkness. The darkness is the problem. The answer is the light. Jesus is the light. Are we connecting dots now? The darkness is the problem. Jesus is the light, and it's the light that shatters the darkness. So Jesus is the answer to whatever problem the darkness is creating. Whatever bondage the darkness is giving, whatever ignorance the darkness is keeping you from, Jesus is the light that is the answer to that darkness. Okay. We often make the mistake of either minimizing the darkness or minimizing the light. We'll either be saying, and often, especially when it creeps into the church, the darkness that I minimize lives right here. See, I can, I can point out your darkness. You're dark, you're dark, you're dark, you're dark, nasty, 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 right? I'm just, not you guys. I was just pretending. It's the people that aren't here today. <laughs> but me, oh, light, light. We tend to minimize the darkness that is in us. Or anyone ever uh, had a pet sin that you just are really good at justifying? Don't raise your hands, you heathens. <laughs> right? Well, I need to do this because, or, or God would forgive this because. Or like, fill in the blank. There's, we've got 2,000 years of justification that people, people have come up with excuses a lot better than yours. I'm just saying, you're amateurs, right? We can justify. We're human creatures that can, so we minimize the darkness. Or if you are not a Christ follower at all, like you want to point, but your group is, is we are the bearers of truth and light, right? But you want to minimize every anything else because we're good so we we either minimize darkness or when the church gets hopeless either out of ignorance or out of a lack of faith we minimize the light and we and we say things like this which is a a, a real experience but it's dark out there it's dark there's a lot of evil. I know I went over there, it was evil. I went over there, it was evil. I went over there, it was evil. And they're evil. And they used to love Jesus, but now they're walking. It's just, it's, just, it's evil. It's just evil. I don't, even, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's just, it's pretty hopeless. Right? If that hurts a little bit, we've all been there. And I want to say that that is an incorrect perception. The light has dawned in the land of deep darkness. The light has come. Don't minimize the light. Don't minimize. Don't say to Jesus, hey, I know you're the light of the world, but I just got news for you. It looks pretty dark. I don't think you can handle this today. I would never say that, Pastor. Yes, you would. I've said it. You've said it. That's what we're saying. We're minimizing the light and the power and the hopefulness of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who has come to the earth as the light in a dark place. Don't minimize the light. Don't walk in hopelessness. Be people of hope. Hope. Say hope. 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 Say hope. <laughs> Darkness is real. It's true. It blinds us to our true condition, right? Right? We don't see how much we really need the Savior. It tries to overcome us. It tries to have dominion in our life. Go ahead, dabble with that sin. Six months from now, you're going to be saying, how do I get unstuck from this? I never intended on this taking over my life. 
What did I do? So I don't mean really devil. Don't devil. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you do, dark, darkness wants to overcome and have dominion over your life, over the land, over your home. It wants, it wants to keep us from seeing truth. Truth about who I am. Truth about the situation. Truth about, about salvation. Darkness has an agenda and a kingdom. Are you with me? I know we're being a little vague today, but we're talking about prophetic scripture here. Darkness is covering the land, and it has an agenda. And it has a, it has a kingdom that it wants to enforce and impose upon you. Darkness spreads and infects and corrupts. Bad company corrupts good character, right? You throw in a bad apple with a bunch of good apples, you don't get all good apples then. It corrupts. Darkness corrupts. So darkness is real. But you know what else is true? Light is real. And light wins. Okay? Light wins. I feel like you need convincing. (laughs) You know who I'm going to have convince you? Not Tim Keller. C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis says this, out of his book, Miracles. He says, the incarnation is the promise of new life. It's the blissful announcement of the end of sin's tyranny. The incarnation, are we on the same page? The incarnation is when God became man. That's when Jesus was born. Little baby, Christmas story is not about a cute little baby in a manger. It's not. That's part of the story, but it's about the incarnation. It's about God coming man, being the light of the light of the world and experiencing humanity on our level so that he could go to the cross and be a sacrifice. He became man. God, the eternal God. Jesus was not born 2,000 years ago. The human Jesus was born, but the son of God has been, he's eternal. Jesus didn't just show up. He was like eternal from eternity past. But the eternity past Jesus clothed himself in flesh 2,000 years ago. We call that, if you are new to this, it's called the incarnation. I know, it's a weird weird name, but the incarnate. Incarnation. The incarnation, the second paragraph there, it's the announcement of our union with Christ and our inclusion into the Trinitarian life of God. Christ has come, and nothing is the same. Life bursting forth from where there was death. Light is destroying all the darkness, and Christ is reigning over all. See, as Lewis says, the incarnation of God the Son takes the body and human soul of Jesus, and through that, the whole environment of nature, all the creaturely predicament into his own being. He soaks up all of humanity into God become man. It's not just a baby born in a manger, guys. That's the timeline of it. That's the physical reality of it. But the spiritual reality is that heaven's come to earth. God's become man. The Son of God soaks up all of this sin, death, and darkness into himself. And he, C.S. Lewis goes on, so that he came down from heaven can almost be transposed into heaven drew earth up into it. And locality and limitation and sleep and sweat and foot sore weariness, frustration, pain, doubt, and death are from before all worlds known by God from within. God knows now. God feels now. God sees now. The pure light walks the earth. The darkness received into the heart of deity is there swallowed up. Where except in uncreated light can the darkness be drowned? Look at that. I love that line. C.S. Lewis, the writer of writers, where except in uncreated light can the darkness be drowned? How do we drown out the darkness of your selfish and sinful and pathetic existence? (laughs) Just seeing if you're following me. Now you guys are mad. I made them all mad. How can we destroy the darkness that wants to creep into my soul? How can we deal with the darkness that covers the land? How can we deal with the darkness that's fighting for the souls of my children? How do we deal with that darkness? C.S. Lewis said, where except in uncreated light can the darkness be drowned? I love that. We're winding down here. (sighs) Where except, uh, the line right before it's kind of grayed out now, but the pure light walks the earth. Isn't that so good? 
The pure light walks the earth. And as Jesus, as the light of God, walked the earth, as Jesus walked the earth, he wasn't like, ooh, a little dark over there. I'm staying over here. Walk in the earth. He's like, yeah, a little dark there. Jesus said, no, where's the darkness? I'm walking right into the heart of it, and I'm transforming darkness by the light of God. I'm receiving all of your brokenness. I'm receiving all of your, your unyielded, arrogant hearts. I'm receiving all of your bitterness. I'm receiving that all into me, and I'm giving you a way out. Because light destroys your darkness. Amen. This land that's covered in thick darkness, I'm breaking that. By my incarnation, Jesus is telling us. Amen. Okay, back to Tim Keller for a couple more. Tim says, the promises of Christmas cannot be discerned unless you first admit that you can't save yourself or even know yourself without the light of his unmerited grace in your life. This is the foundational truth from which we can proceed to learn the hidden meanings of Christmas. You're never going to get what Christmas is about until you're ready to say, I surrender all, right? Until you, until you come to that place where Jesus I'm taking a knee for this one. I, I can't do it. I just, I want to think that I just need a little help. Because we love that. We love massaging our human ego. I just need, I just need to fix a couple things. I hear that all the time. All the time from people that are, I want to come to church, but I just got to fix a couple things. Dude, you're way too broken to fix a couple things. A couple things isn't even going to get like the first page done. And if you spent the rest of your life with all the gurus fixing every little thing, you'd be like a quarter of the way to a 1% there. You need the light to break the darkness and make you new from the inside out. And once we're ready to say, yes, Lord, then we can, then we can see the reality of Christmas. Then we can see the reality of truth of that. John 12, 45 and 46 says this. Jesus is talking. He says, the one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. I have come into the world as a light. Listen to this. So that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. It's the light that's the answer to the darkness. Darkness is the problem. Light is the answer to the darkness. Jesus is the light. Darkness covers the earth, fills the heart of humanity, wrecks your life, wrecks their life, wrecks our life. Darkness is the problem. Light is the answer. Jesus said, I am the light. Jesus said, I am the light. If you need the answer to the darkness, Jesus is like, me, pick me. I'm the, I'm the answer to the darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. Last slide. Got one more in you? Last slide. Here we go. We're, we're going out on a bang here. Tim Keller says, Jesus comes as the light because we are too spiritually blind to find our own way. Jesus became mortal and he died because we're too morally ruined to be pardoned any other way. Jesus gave himself to us and so we must give ourselves wholly to him. He said, it's almost too limiting to say that we celebrate this at Christmas. We stare... <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to make it through this line. We stared dumbstruck, lost in wonder, love, and praise. When you really understand Christmas. Because it's the darkness that's the problem. And the light is the answer. And Jesus said, I'm the light. We don't celebrate Christmas. We look into it and say, Jesus, you gave it all for me. I gave it all for you. Right? That's our, that's our Christmas response. Sorry for getting emotional, but man, I, just can't, I can't read that line without, without going, man, I've, I'm happy to, excited to celebrate Christmas, but we stare into the heart of Christmas as Jesus, you gave it all. The darkness is the problem. But upon this dark world, the light has dawned. Upon those living in great darkness, a light is shining. The darkness is the issue. The light is the answer. Jesus is the light. Amen? That's what we miss when all we think, sing is Rudolph. 
right? I love Rudolph songs. But that's hidden Christmas. That's the hidden Christmas. Is that darkness is the problem. Rudolph's great, but he's not fixing my darkness. Ho, 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 and there you go, and I'm still left, right? I'm still left in left field. I'm still broken, wounded, battered, and bruised. I'm still lost without a savior. Ho, 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 here you go. Merry Christmas. Figgy pudding does nothing for my spiritual eternity. I love all that stuff. I love it. I love Christmas. But the hidden Christmas is the real reason. Darkness is the problem. Light is the answer. Jesus is the light. Amen? God, thank you for being the light that shines upon the darkness. Thank you for being the answer. Forgive us, God, for when we get, get everything wrong. You're so gracious. Help us to see the hidden Christmas. Help us to see that it's the darkness that gets swallowed up into the light of eternity when Jesus shows up. Lord, shatter darkness in our lives, God. Lord, help us to cling to you, surrender to you, yield to you, and say yes to you, God. You're the answer for our darkness. You're the answer for the darkness in the world. We pray that this body of believers would be filled with the light of Jesus Christ and take that light into a dark and dying world. Bless us today. Thank you for being the answer. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen.